Hello there, my name is PLS Cage and welcome to Subnautica News. In this episode, quality of life improvements. Small UI changes. Big sea monkey changes. Change in precursor bounty unlocks. New and old stuff coming. Official story blog post. All electronic equipment now has a dynamic charge bar representative of how much energy is left in the battery of the device or just battery or ion cube. This indicator updates in real time as you play. Another small change is the small temperature indicator icon added to survival and freedom options on main screen when creating new game. More about temperature, the indicator in game now has a little animation like oxygen indicator, and it has been moved to the bottom part of the hut. Next in news, Sea Monkey's behavior changed, at least after Sanctuary Story event. Now they operate in reverse mode and instead of stealing your stuff they bring you resources that you can accept taking it from them and making them happy, or decline shaking your head sideways making them sad. Another similar change received Pinakaritu now will attract your attention to invite you to ride them. You can still hop on it or shake your head to decline. If you played below zero before, you know about rewards and drop pods that you used to get after scanning alien artifacts. Now after scanning them you will immediately receive blueprints for stuff. Scanning 2 will unlock Quantum Locker, Scanning 6 will unlock Iron Battery and Iron Power Cell, and the last at least for now Scanning 8 out of 15 artifacts will unlock Sea Truck Teleportation Module and a Tether Tool. Another changes in building are that you can now build glass corridors, observatory and recyclatron that is basically reverse crafting of everything that will fit inside and has been fabricated or collected except for Cyclops. Now my assistant Kiki will read you an official post about how Jill Murray, Subnautica Below Zero's narrative designer will approach the story and what is coming in the new Big Stable updates. But that will be it for me in this episode of Subnautica News. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hi everyone. Narrative designer Jill here. As you know, we're changing the story for Subnautica Below Zero. I wanted to give you an idea of what goes into this process. First, the basic requirements. Our narrative since Subnautica has been delivered primarily by breaking the story into dozens of fragments and scattering them around the ocean floor. In Subnautica, below zero, Robin is a speaking player protagonist with a lot to think and say compared to Riley in Subnautica. In addition to a detailed personality and working in a life, she needs a character arc that will develop as players play. That implies some kind of linearity but only some. As a player, you need to be able to play the game in your own way, at your own pace. That means you're going to make up a lot of your own story order. So we need to figure out which ways players might be most likely to play and also what ways you can play if you're determined enough. We want the story flow and outcomes to match play styles as much as possible, so you get an experience that makes sense to you. Or not, if you were trying to play in a disjointed way, we trust you to find your own new take on things that we didn't think of. What you can count on, spoilers be here. There's a lot to love in everything that's been made for Subnautica, below zero until now, and we want to make sure we respect that. So there are some familiar things you can count on seeing in the new story. Robin. Some of her details may change, but you'll recognize her character art, and play as her. She's going to have more autonomy than in the previous iteration. We hope you'll enjoy that. Alan. You'll still meet the alien, download him to your mind, and help him find a body that's not yours. We're giving some attention to his personality, backstory and motivations, so there's more to learn about him along the way. Having an alien in your brain is a big deal so we want to let you focus on that. Margaret it wouldn't be Subnautica, below zero without her, as far as we're concerned. We love her and she's staying. We're hoping to connect her to the story more. She'll still be her wild self though. 
no plot can fully contain her. The world and its creatures. Bases may come and go, or shift a few hundred meters in one direction or another, but the substance of the world in Subnautica, below zero will remain fundamentally the same. That means we need to work the new story around the twists and turns, dark caverns, and mischievous sea monkeys we already know. How does story come together? Players sometimes say to me, oh, so you're the narrative person so you decide what the story is. Not quite. What I actually do when I arrive on a team where I've been asked to help evolve a new story out of the elements of an old one, is talk to everyone and find out things like. What do players like about this game and its story? How does the team feel about what they've made so far? What are the deadlines and constraints? What is the team actually going to build? We do a lot of brainstorming what could we do in this or that space? What if a given character behaved in way X instead of way Y? We don't just do this internally. We reach out and gather expert input from outside the team. From there, it's a lot of meetings about every element of the game each cinematic, the way different environments will change or be employed differently. How can the various game mechanics be used to tell different parts of the story? What can we reflect back to the player about their choices, through the way things in the game work, and the way the world and other characters respond to them? Then I begin to sketch out the story overview, and try to imagine how the narrative can be split into all those bits that get scattered around the sea. I make complex diagrams no one else will ever read, but they help me ask the right questions and plan the right plans. Most of this happens in a cycle. More discussions. More brainstorms. We come to a more refined understanding of what is possible. We revise. We cut. We add. We cut something different. We add again. I make a new set of diagrams. When the meetings start to consist of less debate and more so how do we do this? That's when we can really start setting both deadlines and story details in stone. Then, finally, the writing and casting and all the production of story stuff you'll be able to see and hear and read in the game begins for real. But I'll have to tell you more about that another time. So what's in this release? The story updates you'll notice in the upcoming release largely pertain to the way Subnautica, Below Zero begins. Totally new intro cinematic. You'll get to hear the new Robin and new Sam's voices for the first time. New journal entries from Robin and calls between Robin and Alan, in text. We've also had a chance to try things out that led us to understand how to do things better, and we've improved the narrative pipeline. How words actually get into the game is always more complex than anyone could hope. We'll have more to say about casting and how the big bad has impacted our recording process soon. We think it deserves its own post. Thanks for reading, and if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I'll do my best to respond.